Yes, we're at the uh, back of the Renault garage here on the paddock side, and uh, Cyril Bibble's come to join us. Cyril, uh, talk me through this penalty. We know it was exceeding the, the power flow on the MG UK, but was it when Daniel went over a bump that it spiked? Can you just tell us what happened? Yeah, that's what we see from the data. So first and foremost, we don't contest the fact there's been a, a, a spike, uh, probably when uh, when Daniel, Daniel went on the, on the curb. You know, it's very curvy here. You need to use the curb in order to have good lap time. It was not on his best lap, so he was not even attacking. So the lap that was used in order to be promoted from Q1 from to Q2, uh, but it's still a decent lap, and there was a very quick of a, sh of a shot from the MG UK. It's really a spike that we're talking about. We've been able to calculate the equivalent in energy. We are talking of something that has provided an extra gain of uh, one uh, millisecond, one uh, mic microsecond, microsecond, not even millisecond, microsecond. That's the magnitude of what we are talking about. But because it's a fact, we have decided not to contest, not to appeal. I mean, fans will look at it and say, well, it didn't affect whether or not he got into Q2. It was his second quickest lap. Um, but if there was even the tiniest of performance gain, I guess technical regulations say, I'm afraid that's it. No, exactly. I think FIA has decided to take a very black and white approach to, to this, which, frankly, uh, obviously, I'm a, I am on the receiving end, so you expect me to say that. I regret. Because on the one side, we see, uh, since a few races, a very, uh, you know, uh, interesting and reasonable uh, approach from the FIA on a number of things with the black and white uh, flag, which, in my opinion, is a good thing. I think we all like that, the common sense applied by, uh, by Michael. It's a, it's a new stream of thought. And on the other side, you've got that, uh, which is dictated by pure uh, data analysis. So we all talk about AI, we all talk about Automat, but I don't think that the sport should be governed in that way. Yeah, you've, you've changed the control electronics, MG UK as well, you're starting at the back of the grid. Is that actually maybe going to be of benefit in any way because you don't have choice of tyres for one? Yeah, well, frankly, in Singapore, the benefit is to start higher in the grid, so it's going to be a very marginal benefit. No, yeah, indeed, when you start from behind, you always try to introduce tactically some components when we know where we know that we can have some exposure from a reliability perspective, but it's more reliability thinking ahead for the season to come rather than any performance advantage for that race. And performance today, is there any chance of sort of having a result from, from that back of the grid? Get some yes, points? It's really difficult, you know, but we all know also that... Uh, you know, just by finishing, you can be in the point, not just safety by finishing, cars. so safety cars. Yeah. You can, can be a lot of things happening in Singapore. So, uh, you know, that's not what we want to see for Daniel, you know, in particular for Daniel, because he was good position yesterday. It was a good effort after Monza. There was a good momentum. Oh, it's, a, it's a bit harsh, but we'll take it. We'll, as always, we will, uh, we will fight our way uh, uh, against it. And we will try to be tactic, including against McLaren. We need to think about the long haul. Uh, we know it's a race between uh, us and them, so it'll be interesting. All right, great. Thank you very much for joining us, Cyril. And as they say, anything can happen in Singapore, so we hope we have a great race. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank Thanks you. very much.